It is important to remember that you must either physically touch or, if out of reach, point to the item you are checking. You must also be detailed in your explanation of what you are looking for on each item being checked. However, be sure when you are telling the examiner what you are checking and why that you make eye contact with the examiner to assure that he or she can hear you. If they don't hear you, you may as well not have said it. Before beginning the pre-trip, remove the key from the ignition and place it in your pocket. Check that the parking brake is set and the vehicle is chocked. Be sure to listen carefully to the examiner and follow directions given to you precisely. You may be asked to start somewhere other than the front of the vehicle. If you are unsure, repeat the directions you are given back to the examiner and ask for clarification. When starting with the front of the vehicle, move to the front and begin by checking the clearance marker and ID lights on the top of the tractor. Each one should be present, not dirty, broken, or missing, and their lenses should be amber in color. Check the headlights and turn signals. Each should be present, not dirty, broken, or missing, and the headlight lenses should be clear. The turn signals should be either white or amber in color. Check any fender mirrors to be sure they are mounted securely. Look under the vehicle for any fluid leaks. Release the left and right hood latches. Shout out clear and raise the hood carefully. Move to the right side of the engine compartment. Check the oil level by removing, wiping, reinserting, and then removing the dipstick. The oil level must be at or between the full and add marks on the dipstick. Tell the examiner that if the oil level is below the add mark, you would add oil at the fill spout and then recheck the level with the dipstick. Check the alternator. It should be securely mounted to the engine with no missing parts. The wires should be securely connected with no worn or burned insulation. The belt should have not more than three quarter inch free play and not be cracked or frayed. Check the water pump. It should be securely mounted to the engine with no missing parts. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check all belts on the front of the engine. They should have not more than three quarter inch free play and not be frayed, cut, or dry rotted. Check the right front axle. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any nuts or other parts. Check the shock absorber to make sure it is secure, not damaged or leaking. There should be no cracked or loose rubber bushings. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. Check the brake chamber to ensure it is not leaking, cracked, or dented, and securely mounted. Check the push rod and slack adjuster to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjuster should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, or grease. 
D-O-G. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin. At least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tread, pressure, and condition, TPC. The steer tire should have at least 4 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with a tire pressure gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rim ensuring no cracks, bends, or weld repairs. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicate cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the wheel hub to ensure there are no leaks. Adequate oil level can be determined through the removable rubber cap on the front of the hub. Move around to the left side of the engine compartment. Check the coolant level in the overflow tank. It should be between the fill and max lines. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check the air compressor to ensure it is operating properly, mounted securely, and not damaged or leaking. Make sure you tell the examiner that the air compressor is mechanically driven, not belt driven. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check the steering column and knuckle to ensure it is not bent or cracked and all joints are not worn or loose. Check the power steering reservoir to be sure the fluid level is between the add and full marks using the appropriate cold or hot markings. Hoses and connections should not be leaking or show signs of damage. Check the pitman arm and drag link are not worn or cracked. Check that all joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys. The connecting castle nuts should be tight and have a cotter key installed. Check the left front axle. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any nuts or other parts. Check the shock absorber to make sure it is secure and not damaged or leaking. There should be no cracked or loose rubber bushings. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. Check the brake chamber to ensure it is not leaking, cracked, or dented, and securely mounted. Check the push rod and slack adjuster to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjuster should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, and grease, D-O-G. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin, at least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tires for tread, pressure, and condition, T-P-C. The steer tire should have at least 4 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with the tire gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rim, ensuring no cracks, bends, or weld repairs. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present, free of cracks and distortions, 
and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicates cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the wheel hub to ensure there are no leaks. Adequate oil level can be determined through the removable rubber cap on the front of the hub. Move to the driver area of the tractor. Check the mirrors and brackets to ensure they are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. Check the driver window to ensure it is not damaged and has no illegal stickers on it. Check the driver door to ensure there is no damage and that it can open and close properly from the outside. Check the hinges to ensure they are secure and the seals are intact. Check the steps and ensure they are securely mounted. Check the fuel tank to ensure it is securely mounted with no damage to the straps or gaskets. Also, that the tank and lines are not leaking. Remove the fuel cap and check the gasket to make sure it is present and undamaged. Confirm that the caps are undamaged and tight. Check the turn signal light on the rear of the cab. It should be present and have an amber lens, not dirty, cracked, or missing. Check the area right behind the cab of the tractor and check the underside of the tractor. Check the frame to confirm that there are no cracks, broken welds, holds, or other damage to the longitudinal frame members and cross members. Check the drive shaft to ensure there are no bends or cracks and that the couplings are secure and free of foreign objects. Check the exhaust system to ensure there is no damage or leaks and that it is connected tightly and mounted securely. Rust and carbon soot are signs of an exhaust leak. Move to the tractor's rear axles. Check the torque rod to ensure it is not bent or cracked. Check the torque rod mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the air mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any nuts or other parts. Check the shock absorber to make sure it is secure and not damaged or leaking. There should be no cracked or loose rubber bushings. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. Check the brake chambers to ensure they are not leaking, cracked, or dented, and securely mounted. Check the push rods and slack adjusters to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjusters should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, and grease. D-O-G. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin. At least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tires for tread, pressure, and condition. T-P-C. The rear tire should have at least 2 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with a tire pressure gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Check the space between the tires to make sure the tires are not touching and that there is no debris lodged between the tires.
Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rim, ensuring no cracks, bends, or welded repairs. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present, free of cracks and distortions and show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicate cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the axle cover to make sure there is no damage, leaks, or missing nuts. Make sure the nuts are properly tightened. Move to the rear of the tractor. Check all lights and reflectors. Each one should be present, not dirty, broken, or missing, and their lenses should be red in color. Check the mud flaps to ensure they are not damaged and are mounted securely. Move to the coupling system. Check the air lines and electrical lines from the tractor to the trailer. The lines should not be cut, chaffed, spliced, worn, tangled, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts. Check the air connections on the tractor and trailer. The connection should be sealed and in good condition, and the electrical plug should be firmly seated and locked in place. Check the glad hands and seals confirming they are locked in place, free of damage and air leaks. Check the trailer's apron, upper fifth wheel, ensuring it is not bent, cracked, or broken. Check the trailer's kingpin to make sure it is not bent, cracked, or damaged. Check the skid plate, lower fifth wheel, for proper grease and securely mounted to the platform. All bolts and pins are present and secure. The trailer should be lying flat on the fifth wheel skid plate with no gap. Check the locking jaws to confirm they are fully closed around the kingpin. Check the release lever to confirm it is in place and secure. Check the platform to ensure there are no breaks or cracks that support the fifth wheel skid plate. Ensure all locking pins are fully engaged and not loose or missing. Make sure the fifth wheel is properly positioned to allow the tractor to clear the landing gear of the trailer during turns. Check the mounting brackets, bolts, and nuts to ensure they are not loose or missing. Both the fifth wheel and the slide mounting must be solidly attached. Move to the front of the trailer. Check the lights and reflectors on the front of the trailer, ensuring they are present, amber in color, and not dirty, broken, or missing. Check the bulkhead of the trailer, ensuring it does not have any cracks, bulges or holes. Move to the side of the trailer. Check the landing gear to ensure it is fully raised and has no missing parts. Confirm the crank handle is secure and the support frame has no damage. Check the lights and reflectors on the side of the trailer ensuring they are present, amber in color, not dirty, broken, or missing. Check the frame, cross members, box, and floor to ensure there are no cracks, broken welds, holes, or other damage. Check the tandem release and locking pins are locked in place and the release arm is secured. Move to the trailer tandem axles. Check the torque rod to ensure it is not bent or cracked. Check the torque rod mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the leaf springs for any missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaves. Check the spring mounts to make sure they are not broken or cracked. Make sure there are no missing or damaged bushings. Check the U-bolts to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing any lug nuts or other parts. Check the brake hoses, lines, and couplings to make sure they are not cracked, worn, or leaking. 
Check the brake chambers to ensure they are not leaking, cracked, or dented, and securely mounted. Check the push rod and slack adjuster to make sure they are not broken, loose, or missing parts. The slack adjuster should have no more than one inch play with the parking brakes released. Check the drums and linings to ensure there are no cracks, dents, or holes. It should be free of dirt, oil, and grease. DOG. There should be no cracks in the drum greater than one half the friction area. The lining should not be worn thin, at least one quarter inch of lining on shoes. Check the tires for tread pressure and condition, TPC. The trailer tire should have at least 2 32nd inch tread evenly worn. The air pressure should be checked to meet the tire manufacturer's specs with a tire pressure gauge. There should be no cuts or other damage to tread or sidewalls. Each tire should have a metal valve stem and cap that is not missing, broken, or damaged. Check the inside and outside of the rims ensuring no cracks, bends, or weld repairs. Check the space between the tires to make sure the tires are not touching and that there is no debris lodged between the tires. Check the lug nuts to ensure they are all present, free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny threads. Rust around the lug nuts indicates loose nuts. Shiny threads on the studs indicate cross-threaded lug nuts. Check the wheel hub to ensure there are no leaks. Adequate oil level can be determined through the removable rubber cap on the front of the hub. Move to the rear of the trailer. Check the lights and reflectors on the rear of the trailer ensuring they are present, red in color, and not dirty, broken, or missing. Check the doors to ensure they are not damaged and they open, close, and latch properly from the outside. Check the DOT bumper to ensure it is not damaged and is securely mounted. Check the mud flaps to ensure they are not damaged and are mounted securely. Move to the end cab portion of the pre-trip. Close the hood and latch it securely. Climb into the cab using the three points of contact method. When seated, check the seat belt to ensure there are no tears or frays and it latches securely. Check the required safety equipment. Spare electrical fuses, three reflective triangles, properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Perform a safe start as follows. Press the clutch to the floor. Make sure the transmission is in neutral. Turn the key on and wait for the instruments to cycle through. Start the engine. Release the clutch slowly in case the transmission is not actually in neutral. Check the water temperature gauge to be sure the gauge is working and that the warning light is off. Okay. The water temperature gauge should show the temperature is normal or increasing to normal. Check the oil pressure gauge to be sure the gauge is working and that the warning light goes out. The oil pressure gauge should show the pressure is normal or increasing to normal. Check the voltmeter to be sure the alternator is charging the batteries and the warning light is off. Check the air supply gauges to be sure they are working properly. Build the air pressure to governor cutout at roughly 125 PSI.
The governor should also cut in at about 100 PSI. Turn on the headlights and check that the instrument lights also come on. Check the high beam indicator light on the instrument cluster. Turn on the left and right turn signals, checking that each indicator light works. Turn on the four-way flashers and check that both turn signal indicator lights flash. Sound your highway and city horns to ensure they are operational. Run the heater and defroster, checking them with your hand to make sure they are both working. Check the windshield to ensure it is clean with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, or damage to the glass. Check your mirrors to make sure they are clean, adjusted properly from the inside. Turn on the windshield wipers and make sure the wiper arms and blades are secure, not damaged, and operating smoothly. Run the windshield washer to make sure it works and is full of washer fluid. Check to make sure there is not excessive play in the steering wheel by turning back and forth. Play should not exceed 10 degrees. Next is the air brake test. Check that both primary and secondary systems are at full air pressure, 125 PSI, and that the governor cuts out Begin pressing and releasing the brake pedal to reduce the air pressure to below 100 PSI. Check that the governor cuts in. Build air pressure back to full, 125 PSI. Turn off the engine and turn the key back to the on position. However, you do not want to restart the engine. Push in both the yellow and red valves. After the initial air loss without brakes applied, tell the examiner that the brakes should leak no more than 3 PSI in one minute. Press the brake pedal firmly and hold it for one minute. Tell the examiner that the brakes should leak no more than 4 PSI in one minute. Tell the examiner that you are checking the low pressure warning system, which should activate before the air in the system drops below 60 PSI. Begin depressing and releasing the brake pedal until the low pressure warning system activates. Once the warning light and buzzer activate, tell the examiner. Tell the examiner that you are going to check the emergency brake system and that it should activate between 20 and 45 PSI. Fan air out of the system until both valves pop out. Tell the examiner that the valves popped out once both have done so. Do not touch them. Tell the examiner that you are going to test the parking brakes. Perform another safe start. Build up full air pressure. Tell the examiner that you will be testing the trailer spring brakes. Push in the yellow valve, place the truck in second gear, and tug against the trailer spring brakes to ensure that they will hold. Tell the examiner that you will be testing the truck's parking brakes. 
push in the red valve. Pull out the yellow valve. Place the truck in second gear and tug against the truck parking brakes to assure they will hold. Pull out the red valve and ensure the transmission is in neutral. Next, tell the examiner that you are going to test the service brakes. Let the examiner know that you are going to exit the truck to remove the wheel chalk at this time. Re-enter the truck and fasten your seat belt. Push in both valves. Place the truck in second gear and move forward slowly. Press the clutch and then press the brake pedal firmly, noting any pull or unusual noises. Move forward slowly again. Press the clutch and pull the trailer hand valve to test the trailer service brakes. Place the transmission in neutral. Pull out both valves and ask the examiner for assistance with checking the external lights.